Good, um, good morning, everybody. Merry Christmas Eve, Eve. Um, <laughs> I pray that um, I pray that you got all your shopping done, so you can get out of my way because I ain't even started. So uh, shh, don't tell Lisa. <laughs> so this is our Christmas season, amen? amen. And we just thank God for allowing us to see one more Christmas. It is a wonderful time to spend time with our friends and family. Is that right? Yes. It is a good time to be, to not have so much pressure on work and to have a little bit of a break, whether you have one day or two weeks, whatever it may be, to just have some sort of a break. You, you're, the the, the, the uh, high schoolers are done with their finals. We don't talk about the babies. Because if you still get recess, you really don't need no break. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Lord knows I could use two recesses. Anyway, so um, I do thank God for the opportunity to be your speaker and preacher this morning. I thank God for the opportunity to share this space with you all. You all are part of the joy of my week. Preaching and praising God is the joy and the crowning jewel of my week. And I praise the same for you. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you've been through. I don't know what you where you came from. But I just trust that praising God is the on the top of your list. It makes the 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 is the ultimate of your week. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we will continue our sermon series, our current sermon series, which is simply the Christmas series by any other name. Anchored in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, where Isaiah claims the, the four prophetic names of Christ. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the last that we will cover today is Prince of Peace. You know, there's so much um, um, going on today that you don't even hear people talk about world peace anymore. When's the last time you've heard of a, of a national leader from any country to speak about world peace? As a matter of fact, most people are basically arming up to, to, to make sure that their countries are protected or that they can fire on somebody else. No one seems to care about peace anymore. But in, 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 in if you find peace, it's often not from the right places, if we're quite honest. If I bring this from the national level to the personal level. If we're seeking peace, we often don't seek peace where we should seek peace. But I just want to show us today and, and, and prayerfully share with you today that Jesus truly is the Prince of all peace. The authentic peace. The real and true peace comes from our Lord and Savior. So if you would join in with me, I believe this will be a familiar scripture for you in Philippians chapter 4. It will be presented in front of you, but I know you're not just a lazy church goer. You're not just going to let the, uh, the, the, the slides click. You're going to join in with your own personal copy of God's Word. Amen. <laughs> Guilt trip. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. And, and let me take just a, a brief moment to explain why, why it overly emphasizes you carry your own personal copy of God's Word. If you haven't figured it out by now, what we do here is shape what worship can look like here at church and at your home. Worship is what we do. Worship is not just some place we come to to share in with everybody else. This is community worship. But you've got to have your own personal worship. Yes. So the way this church is set up, the way that our services are set up is so that you can sim simply duplicate this at home. You can play the same tunes. You don't need an organ. You don't need a pianist, a guitarist, or anything. Pump that same MP3 that you just finished playing that other stuff from. <laughs> and then take some time to read the scripture. And allow the Holy Spirit to preach to you. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. amen. So, Philippians chapter 4, verse 1. The New King James Version. Therefore, my beloved, and long for brethren, my joy and crown. So stand fast in the Lord, beloved. I implore Yeonia and I implore Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. And I urge you also, true companion, help these women who labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always. 
Again, I will say rejoice. And since he said again, let's say it again. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God and the peace of God. That's the part that we want to anchor our sermon for today. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 There are certain forms of peace. There are certain globes of peace that Paul speaks to here through this passage. He talks and first he speaks on the first point, which is the peace in fellowship, the peace in relationships. Mm -hmm. And so you'll find that as he's speaking to us here in um, in verse two, I implore Yodia and I implore Syntyche to be of the same mind, mm -hmm. to let go of this argument that you got going on, mm -hmm. to agree with each other. That doesn't mean you have to take one side or the other, but find some compromise between yourselves. So when, when, when Paul wrote this letter, he was not in Philippi. He was writing to the church at Philippi, but he was most likely in jail. He was in jail, but he was most likely in Rome in jail. And so he's writing this letter to the church that he started that was located in Philippi. This is one of the most encouraging books of our Bible. And in this fourth chapter, he opens it up talking about you are my crown jewel. I'm proud of you all. I'm proud of this church. You make my heart glad. Here I am in jail, but you make you, you give a song to my heart. I love it when I think about the church at Philippi. That's what he's trying to communicate to him. But then he turns around and makes sure he addresses an issue. And you can understand that I'm away in, in Rome and I hear about arguments going on between Yodia and Syntyche. Basically, there's a church argument going on. Let me bring this down to our level in here today. There's some church fussing and some church cussing going on back at the church at Philippi. And he's saying, y'all need to get this stuff together. And whatever it is, it must be big enough that he don't not only really heard about it, but he decided to write about it. you got to understand, there's got to be more people in the church than Yodia and Syntyche. There's got to be more people. And so he's writing to them to say, get some peace in your life. Wrestle this thing to the ground. Figure it out. And y'all help them. Work this thing out. God wants us to have peace in our relationships. You think about the relationship that you are born in, the, the, the relationship with your child, the relationship with your spouse, the relationship you have with your co-workers, the, the, the immediate relationship you're going to have with people that you bump into at the mall. Be of the same mind. That doesn't mean we have to have the same political views. That doesn't mean we have to stand on each or on the same side of every major argument in this culture. But there's one thing we ought to agree upon, and that should be we want peace. I don't know what it's going to look like, but we shouldn't be putting on these, these arguments in church. Be of the same mind. Now, I know that this is kind of like counterculture, and this is kind of like, like, like anti-today, because most people are gearing up for a fight. If you're on social media, it don't take too long. Scroll a couple of times, and somebody's baiting you or somebody else into an argument. They are self-prescribed experts of everything. They take about an hour and go study any particular subject, and then they show up on Facebook and say, here it is, now let's argue. You do the same thing when you're going into work on in each day. That person that ticked you off the day before, you sit in your car for 15 minutes trying to run through your mind all the arguments and debates that you're going to run across them as soon as you see their face. Oh, let them say it again. And I'm going to say this. And when they say that, and then I'm going to say this. And when they say this, I'm going to wag my finger and shake my head. And I'm going to say this. Be of the same mind. It's one thing for the world to be argumentative. It's another thing for God's children to be argumentative. 
He tells us in his word to pursue peace with all men. That means it don't matter what they look like. It don't matter if they're the same shade of color. It don't matter if they're the same height. It don't even matter if they're the same gender. Be of the same mind. Pursue peace with all men. Here are a few more verses for your, for your memory, for your reading. Ephesians 4, verse 26. Be angry and do not sin. I'm just going to read that part of that verse. Be angry and do not sin. We tend to think that being Christians, we can't get angry. Well, you can be angry. Just don't let them drive you into sin. Be angry and do not sin. James 1, verse 19. Know this, my beloved brothers. Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. We get it the reverse way. We're quick to anger, yes. quick to speak, yes. and slow to hear. Yes. Yes. And we wonder why we got so many problems. 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 23. Have nothing to do with foolish, ignorant controversies. All y'all should just delete your Facebook page now. <laughs> Just obliterate Instagram and shut down Twitter. Have nothing to do with foolish, ignorant controversies. You know that they breed quarrels. Too many times we're preparing for a fight when our God prepared us for peace. We should be a peace-seeking people. Why? Because we serve the Prince of Peace. And he invites you into a bigger globe, a, 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 a wider globe. A, a, that was a microcosm. Now he's inviting you to the macrocosm. Have peace in everything is the second one. This is where he jumps down to verse 6 and he says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, let your, re, let, your, let your request be made known to God. Be anxious for nothing. He goes from a personal uh, argument to a personal pursuit of peace with one person or in relationship to the entire world. As a matter of fact, he jumps out of the side of people because in everything means everything. Everything is inanimate and animate objects. Everything means everybody and everything that you see. Be anxious for nothing. Let nothing make you nervous. Let nothing make you fearful. Be anxious for nothing. So your issues and your, and your circumstances that you're going through, he still says to be anxious for nothing. You would think Jesus didn't know that people go broke sometimes and we get nervous when our money gets shallow and our bills get deep. But he says be anxious for nothing. You would think Jesus doesn't know that I got to go to the doctor next week and I'm waiting to hear my test results. Be anxious for nothing. You would think Jesus knew that I'm not my own employer. That my name is not on the sign of the building that I work in. But just because layoffs are looming, he still says, be anxious for nothing. For he knows your issues. He knows your circumstances. And, and this is the deal, this is the deal, this is the deal. We tend to think peace will be available after the storm. And we can get mad at God for bringing storms. And they say that there's an eye to every storm. And at the, in, in the eye of the storm, in the eye of that whirlwind, is where you'll find peace. Your God is saying, it can be a 150 mile an hour wind. And I will still give you peace. There's a story in Mark chapter 4. When Jesus and the disciples got into a boat. And they went, going, they, they, they went across the Sea of Galilee, Galilee to go to the other side. And Jesus took a nap. Now this was after he had just finished teaching a series of parables. The way I see it, he just finished preaching. And so he needed a preacher's nap. I don't know if it was Sunday. I'm not sure if he had his dose of fried chicken. I don't know what he did, but he needed a nap. So he goes to sleep in this boat as they're sailing across to the other side of the Galilee. But wouldn't you know it? The Bible says suddenly a storm shows up. Suddenly the winds start to blow. Suddenly it is not just sprinkling, it is pouring down rain. Suddenly 
the waves begin to shift and water begins to pour into the boat. And these fishermen, the, these adult fishermen are starting to get nervous. They got so nervous that they went to wake up Jesus out of his sleep and ask him the perverse, the, not the perverse, the actual question, Lord, don't you care that we perish? It's one thing to wake up Jesus. It's another thing to wake him up nervously. It's one thing to wake him to wake up Jesus. It's another thing to wake him up in a panic. Lord, don't you care that we might die? What they fail to understand that if Jesus is with you, it don't matter the storm you're going through. The storm can be raging, but as long as you have Jesus, you will always be safe. Be anxious for nothing. The, the, the rain can be coming down in sheets and buckets, but still, do not be anxious. For you have Jesus in the boat with you. Let me say it another way. Jesus wasn't planning on dying. And as long as he's with you, you ain't got to be nervous. Amen. Because if you got to die, then he got to die too. And he wasn't dying that day. Not that day. This ain't, this ain't Good Friday. As long as you have God. As, and, and you may never, ever put your toes in the Sea of Galilee. You may never ever set foot on a boat. But you got storms. Yes. And the message to communicate to you today is you don't have to wait until the storm is over. Yes. You can have peace in the middle of the storm. And you ain't even got to wait for the eye of the storm. Yes. For the Lord of the storm yes. is still with you. Yes. And as long as he's with you, yes. you will have peace. Yes. Be anxious for nothing. No matter your circumstances, no matter where you stand, no matter who you are, as long as you have Jesus, there is no storm that can blow that will knock you down. There are valley moments in all of our lives. We all love those mountaintop moments where we get to we get to see everything. We get to look down on everything. We get to we get to see far and wide. We love those mountaintop moments. And if you don't, you, 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 you ain't telling the truth. I won't call you a lie, but you ain't telling the truth. We love those mountaintop moments. But life is filled with some valley moments. Psalm 20. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Don't forget the next part. I will fear no evil. Be anxious for nothing. For he is with you. His rod and his staff comfort you. You have a God that don't shake, quiver, or, or get nervous just because you got a storm. You've got a God that is bigger than your You've got a God that's bigger than all four of your storms going on at the same time. You've got a God that's bigger than all of our storms all put together. You have access to the God of all gods. The, King of all kings, the ruler of this universe. Nothing moves that doesn't pass through his hands. You don't have to wait until the storm is over. If you don't believe me, just ask Job. Job, in the middle of his mess. Job, if chapter one of Job was enough, you lost all your possessions. You, you lost all your children. They didn't have to make a chapter two. Chapter one was enough. But we tend to forget that was a chapter two. And at the top of chapter two, it kept going. He got sick. They said boils were covering him from his head to his toe. And not just boils, painful boils. I don't know if you ever had one boil. Lord Jesus. Head to toe. No matter which way you lay, you're laying on top. It's just a nasty mess. But, but Job says in, in, in chapter 13, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I do understand that your situations are tough. I do understand that your situations are big. I'm just trying to remind you that your God is bigger. Your God is bigger. Your God is bigger. Amen? Amen. Amen. Third point. 
We have peace through Christ. It's one thing to have peace. It's another thing to have peace through Christ. For he says in verse 7, the peace of God. You have the peace of God. Christ is God. You have the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. You should be so at peace, they should wonder that something is wrong with you. Because they know your circumstances. They know the issues you're going through. They know how broke down your car is. They know how messed up your marriage is. They know you're sitting on shaky grounds when it comes to your job, but guess what? You ought to still have some joy in your heart. You should still be able to work up a smile on your face. And I don't mean that joker smile, that... Not that smile, but an authentic, comforting smile on your face communicating to the outside world that there's, in this mess in the outside world, there's an inside world inside of me where the sea is calm, where things are right, because my God exists. And as long as I am the child, as long as I am associated, as long as he allows me to attach myself to him, I've got the Prince of Peace. And that Prince of Peace should be so, so, so relevant in your life that the, the type of peace that you have should make people feel a little nervous. Oh no, you might want to check her purse. <laughs> She'll look too happy. I saw him deliver that pink slip to her desk. But she ain't broke out. She ain't cussed nobody. She didn't chop nobody in the throat. She ain't kicked nothing over. She didn't, she didn't do none of that. She just sitting at her desk, packing her stuff nicely, and smiling. She actually saying goodbye to people. And you know the story. You know how this goes. Then they switch over and said, because if it was me, yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, you so at peace you can't even explain it. You feel so good about, the, about God being in your situation that you can't even explain. It surpasses your understanding. So you can't, you can't help them not feel so nervous about why you're still smiling about the craziness going on. You ought to be able to drive through traffic with the hot mess that it is and be able to smile from your job to your house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You ought to be able to wake up to your crazy husband and your crazy wife and still be at peace. For whatever your marriage is, your God didn't pull you together to let crazy break you apart. You got the Prince of Peace. And this is, the, the, of course, this is Christmas season and everybody's getting Christmas gifts. And on, on, on the inside of those Christmas gifts or on the outside of those Christmas gifts, there's some kind of label. There is some kind of label that lets you know who made that thing that you get. It could be your suit, your jeans, your shoes, whatever it is. It has a label, a brand, or a marking somewhere on it so that you know the originator. And you also know that you can be assured of the product based upon the name. The product doesn't mean as much if it don't have that name. Yes. If you don't believe me, get some red shoe, get some shoes with some red bottoms, and they're not made by that, you know, that French dude that I can't, whose name I can't pronounce. <laughs> Wear those shoes if you want to. You can leave them red stuff marks all over the floor. Get some jeans. That's supposed to be Lucky Brand, but the horseshoe's on the upside down? <laughs> the label qualifies the product. If your piece comes from anywhere else, it is inauthentic. If your piece has any other name other than Jesus Christ, don't trust that piece. For there is peace in other places. There is peace in other things. The, the, there's peace in the TV that you plan on binging on this week. There's peace in the holiday food you plan on eating. But the peace of God goes beyond food and television. 
The peace of God is the authentic peace, the everlasting peace, the peace that you can't explain. It's the peace of God. There are people who are chasing peace in, in, in situations and circumstances that's driving them deeper and deeper into sin. Mm -hmm. Drinking shall not be the source of your peace. Mm -hmm. Smoking shall not be the source of your peace. Drugs cannot be the source of your peace. You will not find peace between the legs of any man or woman. Amen. That is not Amen. the source of your peace. Your peace has to have the marking. The, your peace shall have the stamping. The, your peace shall have the label. Jesus Christ. Amen. For he is the prince of peace. And this is how we get peace no matter where we are, no matter where we're going. We get the example from who they call three wise men. You'll find them in Matthew chapter 2. It says they came from the east. It doesn't give a, a particular country or a particular city. It just says they came from the east. And they say, they, they say that the wise men followed a star. And the wise men gave up their purpose for following that star before you even get halfway through the chapter. They came from the east to follow the star to get to the king so they can worship him. I would like to invite you into another idea of peace. The way that you get peace is by way of worship. So much so that you feel unsettled when you don't worship your God. That you feel some kind of way when you don't make it to church. That, 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 that when, when your life gets so busy and you don't have your prayer time and your meditation time and your singing time with your God, your whole day is off. Your peace comes through worship. They followed that star for days on end and for days on end. And, 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 and they, they, they didn't have to, they didn't travel along. They, 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 they must have had a, a caravan following that star. And once they found him, once they found him, they gave him their best. Now this is my mind, it may not work this way in your mind, but it works this way in my mind. I believe somewhere back when, when they were over in the east, they were all together and they were getting their stuff ready to go. And one wise man said to the other wise man, well, what you bringing to give to the king? Well, what do you mean give to the king? Well, I plan to give him my best and my worship. Well, what you going to give then? I'm going to give him frankincense. And then the other wise man says to the other two wise men, so what, what y'all going to bring? Well, I'm going to bring myrrh because that's my best. And then the last wise man speaks up in the midst of them and says, I'm going to bring gold because that's my best. And when they found the king, they bowed down to their, to, on, to their faces and worshiped him and gave him their best. Your peace is in your best in that transaction of worship with God. Amen. Giving God your best. And all due worship. Giving him all the praise. Giving him all the honor. Yes. And giving him all the glory. You ought to feel nervous about songs that call themselves gospel but don't mention the name of your God. Mm -hmm. You ought to feel nervous about preaching that, 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 that goes on for hours and never mentions the name of your God. You ought to start feeling nervous about some of the TV that we watch. Because God ain't nowhere in it. Our worship is a daily occurrence. It's not just a weekly thing. Let me say it this way. You don't wait till Sunday to eat, do you? Because y'all would have been rapping us on them donuts if that was the case. Fighting each other, you'd, you'd have been like Yoli and Sintiki. <laughs> I'd have the right you. Be of the same mind. <laughs> Share the donuts. <laughs> you don't wait till Sunday to eat, then why do we wait for Sunday to worship? Turn on your music. Lift your voice. Sing to your God. And allow the Holy Spirit to preach to you through His Word. For He has a message. A daily message, an hourly message to expend upon each and every last one. You have a God.
who's called the Prince of Peace. He's worthy of all the glory, the honor, and the praise. Give him that praise and allow him to give you his peace. But you need it, man. You, 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 you need it. I don't even know what your week looked like, but I can tell you, you need it. You need this peace. The more you engage with people, you need this peace. Because you got to leave your house, you need this peace. In your house, you need this peace. If you're a child of God, living in this dim, dark world, you need this peace. Grab this peace. It's accessible to you. It's available to you. All you've got to do is give him your best in your worship. And he will give you his peace. Amen? Amen. 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 Stand on your feet.